usually what I like to ask myself is what is the conversation I want to keep having? What is the conversation I can't stop having? Because you know, when it comes to creating a new body of work or a new business, you have to be so in love and so like passionate about what you're doing. And if you don't have that like deep love and passion, like it's very hard to drive beyond the challenging. <laughs> like your why has got to be big. And so I, I, after a couple of months, I really landed on like, wow, you know, the thing that I'm so passionate about, of course, and this is true for so many of us, is the thing that I was struggling with myself. Welcome to Reward, the podcast of The Trust. We are the show specifically for women entrepreneurs who want to build businesses into the multi-million dollar revenues and beyond, but especially because we know the reward is much greater than that. I'm Allie Brown, and I'm excited to introduce you to these diverse female leaders from a variety of industries, women making huge impact and who are unwilling to settle for the status quo. On the web, visit jointhetrust.org to learn more about our modern community for forward-thinking seven and eight-figure women entrepreneurs. That's jointhetrust.org. See you there. Now, get ready to enjoy this episode's powerful conversation. Hi. I it's it's so great to see you. And we've been talking about having this conversation for so long for people to be privy to, um, which I think is what I'm most excited about today because I get to have a lot of, you know, conversations with you one-on-one and then the, the, the weight of the things that, um, we've been discussing and your new IP that you're bringing out to the world and all this stuff is so exciting. So I'm very excited that you're here. And I want people, though, to understand uh, your background. I know that um, many of you are likely familiar, you know, with the companies that Carrie has actually founded. And um, I'm going to actually go to your bio verbatim, which I usually don't do, but I want to make sure I don't miss anything. So Carrie has founded or co-founded six companies serving 60,000 clients and generating 200 million in cumulative revenues. And she's worked with teams of zero to over 200 people, um, board member, executive. Um, you know, she'll tell you more about her, her companies, but I just want you all to take in um, the, the, the gravity of what Carrie has accomplished with her business acumen, with, with creating movements that people want to be a part of. And then now, now you're ready to unleash like a whole new level for women out there, which I'm going to let you dive into, but I don't even know where to start. Do we want, do we want to start with a bit well, about Well, let Carrie me first Peters? just start by saying, for, well, first of all, thank you for having me here. I'm so excited to, to be here. This is such a wonderful opportunity. And I always love, always, always love the opportunity to have a conversation with you um, because you're so incredibly perceptive and insightful. And so I'm just excited about what's going to unfold here. Um, Cool. I also want to clarify that the companies that I've co-founded and founded, like if you put them all together, every single one, we've probably, we've touched around 60,000 people's lives. The ones that I like directly am like the teacher leader person in front um, is around like 36,000. And I also just want to highlight something that's a little unusual about my experience is that I've been a solo entrepreneur where I've, you know, I'm, it's me, I'm the leader of the business. But something that's really been defining about my career is that for the past 13 years, I've been in business partnerships. So one mm. with wow, my longest time work wife, business partner, Stacey Morgenstern, um, at, who co-founded uh, two companies, one called Holistic MBA and one called Health Coach Institute with me um, and one called Empowered Education. But then we were also in business with four other partners over the course of eight years. And so partnership has really been a defining element Mm. of my journey and a key part of my success. Like without all of the people on the team, these kinds of achievements wouldn't have happened. So I just want to make sure that's clear versus like me, I did it all by myself, which is not the case. It's interesting because you don't hear about as many partnerships with women as you do with men. You know, mm. I, 
maybe do, do you think that's accurate or, or not? I, I just, I think a lot of the women I've worked with have been very, uh, leery of getting into partnerships. They, they worry about losing control of their business or there's trust issues or they just don't find the right fit. Did you always have a knack for finding good partners? No, as a matter of fact, like networking and relationships are my absolute weakest link. Um, as a, I am not a natural like connector. I'm not a natural networker. I don't have a huge group of, but I knew, I mean, the, the, the thing is when I started, I was a very unlikely entrepreneur. I was a professional actress for 14, 15 years. And that was always my dream. That was what I was going to do. And so when I started my first coaching business, which was like a surprise to me that I was going to do that anyway. That was like, I never saw myself as a business person. But my thought was, well, I'm still acting. I, I'm going to book my series. I'm going to get my whatever show mm. in the theater. I'm going to do something that is going to require me having somebody else around to help when I can't be there. That was my original thinking and why I was sort of drawn to a partnership. Because it felt like I, yeah. I don't, I didn't, couldn't quite figure out how I was going to do it by myself. Stacy and I connected because I started interviewing people who were successful as coaches. What did they know that I didn't know? Because I struggled. I, I, there was a lot I didn't know, but I knew people had figured it out. So what did they know that I didn't know? So I'd interviewed her a bunch for my audience, and every time we were on an interview or something together, there was so much chemistry, and people started sending us messages like, um, working with the two of you, can I do that? That would be amazing. You guys are my dream team. And after that happened, wow. like so many times she called me, it was like, are you getting these messages? I'm like, yes. Are you getting these messages? And, um, she, she said, Hey, I had this idea of this thing called holistic MBA. And I didn't even let her finish her sentence. I'm like, I'm in, um, because interestingly, <laughs> Interestingly, I had reached out and like put feelers out to other people to see if they might like to partner up or you know, I like to, partner. and it was always mm. a no. Um, and then when she called and said that, I knew like it's like I'm actually just sort of like, um, you know, moments in your life that you don't realize are absolutely changing your life, and that conversation changed both our lives. And I, I just I knew in the moment, like, this is what I've been looking for. And um, we've, we've certainly, a lot of people told us um, a partnership is not going to work. This is never going to work. And a lot of times, yeah, you might see two guys or you might see like a, a, a couple, like a romantic couple mm -hmm. that's whether they're mm -hmm. married or not married or whatever, and they're in business together. And we're, we didn't even know each other. People assume we were like best friends. No, we know each other at all we yeah. completely just dove in and it took a leap and um I mean it's it's an amazing miracle that it worked out but I think we also put an enormous amount of work and we treated our business relationship like you would a marriage and we knew we mm -hmm. each had to work on our own stuff we were committed to that and certainly like we didn't do things perfectly, but anytime we were like at each other's throats and ready to break up, there was always some like some wise uh, coach, counselor, mentor who was able to help us navigate through that period so we could keep up leveling together and keep up leveling together and keep growing together, especially because, you know, over the course of 13 years, there's marriages and babies and perhaps a divorce or there's an illness or there's like so many things happen. And so it's a really an interesting thing to keep two people on the same, like with the same shared values, goals and, and desires for the same outcome over a long course, like a, a long period of time. So I we got like super lucky. And now, a book. There's a book there, I think. Um, I well, like potentially, and now we're, we're, I could say we're, we're getting ready for the next up level because health coach Institute was just acquired by ISSA international sports science association, which is the number one, um, leader in like the wellness industry. And they have the, it's like the best possible news for any student or grad of health coach Institute. And for us, because for Stacy and I, like the absurd question that we tried to answer when you what, like what, what, pardon my French, what fucking 
balls do we have on us to go, we're going to create a health coach training? Like what? You know, when I think about it now, I'm like, how did we have the audacity to do that? Um, <laughs> wanted the, 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 we asked ourselves, like, if we're going to do this, what do we want to make absurd? Because, you know, like years ago, we used to smoke on airplanes and row 10 was non-smoking and row 11 was smoking. And we look at that now, we go, that's absurd. <laughs> it's like crazy. And so we're thinking, mm-hmm. if we're creating a future, what do we want to be able to look back in that future and go, oh, that was absurd. And it was, we wanted to create like that it was absurd that there was a time when everyone didn't have an advocate for their well-being, when everyone didn't mm. have support, when everyone, that, that became our purpose. And um, we've been able to create such incredible momentum with HCI, but now being partnered with ISSA is like, I'm, I'll be honest with you, I've been in a little bit of like shock going, oh my gosh. So Stacy and I together in this particular, in our companies specifically, where she and I were the like face of the brand, not an owner, but we did, weren't re- working in the company. 36,000 mm-hmm. students, like we could add a zero to that number because mm-hmm. ISSA has the incredible um, experience and uh resource and know-how I think about adding a zero to that number and I'm just like oh my god I, I I feel very um I guess I take it seriously the responsibility that you can influence a generation of coaches and have a significant impact on this industry and really fulfill on that mission that we started out with and I honestly it's I'm gonna choke up again like this it, it's 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 overwhelming truly yeah um, yeah so the leverage and power yeah, that, that you've um, amassed from being that solopreneur now to now being able to help hundreds of thousands of people empower themselves. So I just want you to take that in as we're talking because it's it's quite extraordinary. Well, thank thank you. It's it's actually I find it very difficult to take in. To be honest with you, there is a way in which I sort of like uh huh uh huh, and I so that's something for me to look at within <laughs> myself of like how do I even like. I wrap my head around that. But the thing that's interesting about it is even with all of that, um, and as grateful as I am for my partnership with her and all of the other partners that we've had over the years and how passionate I am about Health Coach Institute and its future, there, there's still over the last few years a part of me that was like hungry for something new. You know, mm. I'm a, at the end of the day, I am a creator. Just, yes, I was an actor for many years, but you're a creator. Like as an actor, you are creating an experience that moves an audience. Ideally, in a good way, Mm -hmm. like has them feel some kind of emotion or has some kind of insight or have, and, and that's, you know, we've been creating the experience of HCI and I love, I think it's so beautiful. I love it so much. And I love to create more experience. Like I was just hungry. Like what's more, my creative spirit was hungry. And Mm -hmm. uh, truthfully, I felt very badly about admitting that because I felt like I would be betraying what is by feeling hungry for something different. Yeah. And yeah. I, so who, I, who am I, I to change that? Cause I've, I've, I've gotten everything I've, I've wanted, right. I've reached my goals. I'm, I'm at this place that women would dream of, of being at, right? Who, how dare we want something more? Yeah. And what is that going to mean for the others? Like if, if, if I, if I am going out and doing work on my own, what's gonna, what's that going to mean for Health Coach Institute? And is that mm. our, our students going to be worried? Is team going to be worried? Is a potential student who would enroll at Health Coach Institute going to look me up and go, well, I don't like her. I'm not going to that school. You know what I mean? So there was this way in which I was holding back. I was sort of stuffing down my like hunger to protect my baby. You know, it felt, feels to me like, you know, something I care so deeply about, the school. But until I, yeah, it, but it was starting to really get difficult to, to push that down and force that down. And I, 
just found myself like losing that thing that makes my work special, which is having an instinct and an intuition and a creative spark and then driving to make something and bring it out. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't, you know, at Health Coach Institute, we yes, we're going to continue to up level and all of the, like, there's always innovations going on, but there's my spirit also wants something brand new, you know, and what's, yeah. what's simmering underneath. And I just kept asking myself, really? So like, what am I hungry for? Like, what do I want to do? What am I hungry for? While I was still holding back. Um, until I started working with a new coach last year. You might know her. Her name's Allie Brown. Just saying. <laughs> and I was telling you about all of these worries. But what if people, what if it hurts school? What if, what if, you know, students, what, if, what about all the others? And I, I've got to appear a certain way. And I just remember you looked at me like square in the eye and you said, you are done. So you said, Carrie, you are done being relatable. And I honestly, it was like you hit me with a, like a frying pan on the side of the head because, and this is what a great coach does is helps you understand something that is absolutely that was absolutely what was happening, that being relatable or being what I think people needed me to be so this other thing could be okay was like, oh, wow, look mm. at this codependent relationship I have with my business. So interesting. I'm going to hold back for the sake of this thing so it can be okay and then I will suffer. Ooh, I haven't so, heard you put it in those words before. That's interesting. The codependent right? part. That's fascinating. Well, I'm going to protect the wow. other at the expense of myself. I mean, sometimes as women, we have to do that. Like if my daughter is, um, uh, has a stomach flu and she's throwing up all night, like, yeah, I'm going to be up with her, even though not getting sleep is hurting me or you know what I mean? So like, there's sometimes when you're a caregiver or you're a bit like, where you just have to like dig in and, and, and deal with something difficult. Yeah. Sacrifice makes sense then. Right. Yeah, exactly. But over the longer term, where the sacrifice is costing you your joy and your thing mm. that makes you feel alive inside, that's too high a cost. That's too high yeah. a cost. So when you presented it to me like that, and I was so struck, like, oh my God, that is what I'm doing. It gave me the courage to really decide to explore that hunger for something new. And I decided to allow my mind to go, where, where do I feel excited? Where do I feel inspired? Whenever I'm thinking about new work to create, and I think at heart, my greatest value is as, like I say, a, like a for lack of a better word, content creator, I guess, right? And I don't mean reels. I mean like body of work. Mm -hmm. Um. Usually what I like to ask myself is what is the conversation I want to keep having? What is the conversation I can't stop having? Um, and so I started having lots of conversations mm. on Instagram live or, you know, talking with colleagues or talking with my girlfriends. We're not in, you know, the entrepreneurial space or the coachy world at all. And just go like, what do, what do I want to talk about? Because, you know, when it comes to creating a new body of work or a new business, you have to be so in love. And so like passionate about what you're doing. And if you don't have that like deep love and passion, like it's very hard to drive beyond the challenging. <laughs> like your why has got to be big. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so I, I, after a couple of months, I really landed on like, wow, you know, the thing that I'm so passionate about, of course, and this is true for so many of us, is a thing that I was struggling with myself. I was hungry for more, but I told myself no so I could give others a yes somehow. And when I started mm -hmm. to think about it and look back over training thousands and thousands of women over so many years, and of course my own personal experience, um, is that so many of us, almost all of us, want more for ourselves whether it's like more impact from work or more 
like genuine happiness in our own skin or comfort in our own skin, or maybe we want more from our relationships or more from finances, more fulfillment, more whatever it is, more. But but if you and I were in a room with a bunch of women live and we said, who here wants more, but you're holding yourself back, like every, all raise our hands. Yeah. No matter what level too, because I think there's different levels to it. I just have to echo something you said, because this was like a, a bomb dropped that was telling myself no, so I could give others a yes. Oh, oh, <laughs> that's just, I feel that in my body when I think of that, because we all do it or we've seen people do it. I mean, we've all, we all have done it and continue to do it and catch ourselves doing it. And you just summed up so beautifully what many of us do, not only in our um, everyday life, but in, in, in business as well. And I think, and this, this taps into a whole other category too, with like, you know, navigating team dynamics and leadership. Yeah. And I mean, there's just so many places you could even take that one statement, but we're here in the container of the show. So I have to stay here with you and I'm, I'm upset because I want to... <laughs> I feel like I want to take this there too, maybe a part two at some point, but you just, just, you just unpacked something that just blew my mind. Yeah. We, we, we starve ourselves to feed others. And that's where we end up like resentful, angry. And then, then I just, I know for me, I just would settle for like sad substitutes for what I really wanted. Chocolate. Some people drink wine whatever it is, you know, mm -hmm. and I, I would just try to create like a fake fullness because I couldn't get the fullness that I really wanted because I, I couldn't even really connect to like, well, what, what am I actually hungry for? Mm. What am I hungry for? And mm -hmm. it just made me think a lot about, uh, and as a health coach, um, my passion was always, um, sort of a women's relationship to hunger because uh, part of my struggle was I, I was an emotional eater for many, many years. And I always, if, when I could observe myself from afar, I'd always find it interesting. Like, wow, isn't this interesting? No amount of food actually satisfies the hunger. Mm. Isn't that interesting? And then I just started thinking more and more about hunger and what is that? What is that primal desire? And what does it mean for a woman who whose hunger, I mean, let's be honest, for many, many centuries, we've been told that our hunger is just wrong. Wrong. Not only wrong, but dangerous. If you love sex, you're mm -hmm. a whore. If you love food, you'll get fat and you can't be fat. You cannot be fat. You must be skinny. Like, what? If you speak up, you're a bitch. If you trust your gut, you're a witch. I mean, how many times have I been in a, a room with a bunch of other women, entrepreneurs, whatever, been like, oh yeah, we've all been burned at the stake. Oh, for sure. For mm -hmm. sure. And another life, we mm -hmm. were up, we were all a hundred percent. Um messages like if you're powerful, no one will love you. If you love money, yeah. you're greedy and no one will love like you're oh, you're just then if you're so independent, no one's no one's gonna love you or whatever. If you love work, you're a bad mom. You've got to be a certain, right? There's all these like messages that we get uh, about our appetite. So when we have a desire for something, it's so loaded because it's connected to all this shame and guilt for all these things we're not supposed to feel. Mm -hmm. And if we indulge in our appetite, if we really can indulge in our appetite, that oh my god I'm bad I did something bad like a simple example is um oh I had cake today I was so bad appetite you know rules. when I think about yeah when I think about appetite mm -hmm. it's not really about food it's about hunger but mm -hmm. that's just what like one example of the way in which we really struggle with our appetites we're afraid of what we're hungry for. Sometimes even asking the question, what am I hungry for? Is like, I don't want to know because what's that going to mean? Like, right. 
Mm-hmm. Can you give some context on this for especially the women listening who are entrepreneurs and how this could link into you know what they're creating with their business and 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 mission or you know because some of them may be listening right now and going like you know is this like a fight that goes on in my mind is this like a war between like what I really want and what I'm doing or can they be merged you know I'm just thinking through the the, the business elevation process yeah so let me see if I understand you are you asking like when it comes to building a business is the question like am I really doing, am I doing what I really want to do or I'm doing what, am I doing what I think I have to do in order to get such and such, but I actually don't really want yeah, it. Yeah. Like how, how, yeah. Cause you and I actually haven't done that. We've, we've gone through like, you know, the model and you've shared with me the IP, but like, actually now that I'm thinking about it, like what I mentioned before, like how this could plug into, you know, growing a business or a team or, you know, I think there's, there's a new model here actually could be creating in like how, someone approaches even their business along mm. with, with their appetite and what they really want to experience. I'm putting you on the spot here, but I'm just thinking through, you know, being, it's about, it seems to me being so authentic and honest about like what re, what you really want, what lights you up. And I don't see that like, like only good can come of that in the end, because then yeah. you'll find other people to compliment you, right. And work with you and partner with and the synergies develop. And so I'm just taking it in that category. Uh, yeah. I mean, quickly. there's two just things. Kinda, I swerved up. in I- that lane. Sorry. <laughs> No, Allie. Oh my gosh. I'm like, oh, how much more time do we have? I'd love to talk about this yeah. forever. Um, <laughs> yeah. Speaking of a conversation I want to keep having. Yeah. I mean, there's a couple of things that come up for me. One is that, you know, when it comes to business, um, it is an incredible thing to have a vision, a big vision and drive after it and create something. It's absolutely amazing and astonishing. And also, there can be situations where one day an entrepreneur wakes up and notices like, wow, I have built my own jail cell. I, I feel so trapped by this thing that I created and I don't know how to get out of it. And I don't know how do I shift to something more authentic? What even is that? Is that going to generate revenue? What does it mean for me Mm -hmm. if I were to veer away from this particular identity that I've spent so many years building. Like there's a, I mean, you experienced that in your business where you built a, a phenomenal business and then decided like, I'm not, I'm hungry for something else. And that was yeah. a big leap that you took, right? To make yeah. a change. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So I think just there's, you know, just, just, I think there's a whole other level in, in this to be explored to yeah. what you've just started, which we haven't even really unpacked yet. And I'm sorry to jump there. I just get excited about new ideas and concepts and I want to like that's jump up the, and run to the wall. I, uh, listen, <laughs> which is I, what I do. I was like, I'm so excited for this conversation because who knows what cool stuff is going to come up. Like you and I are just going to conversation. We're making notes for each other. There's stuff going on the walls here. So, uh, all right, back to the show. Yes, we do. Re- we do remember you all are here and listening and watching. Sorry. Um, <laughs> we're in our own world. You know, I'm going to switch gears for a second if I could, and then we'll come back. Um, and maybe, maybe this relates, but tell me, you know, in building your, your businesses to the levels that have, uh, they have grown to, you know, what are, what are the biggest lessons that you've learned? like about, um, decision-making, um, trust, you know, what, what, what do you have to share with everyone listening who, who listened to the numbers earlier and are still like, wow, this is impressive what this woman has done. Well, I mean, God, like a million. So, um, I think one of the things that, uh, when it comes to decision-making and trust there's trust of self and trust of others um and i wonder if i can put this succinctly i i honestly think the hardest thing at least for me and i don't know that this is true for everybody i think other people may have a different experience but for me the hardest person to trust is myself and sometimes when i am so tied to an idea 
and I'm I'm driving so like my vision is the right thing, especially working with partnerships, right? Um, mm. This is what I know. What I know. <laughs> Where so, I have to just check and go like, okay, am I covering? I guess what I'm always trying to 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 suss out for myself because I really do think if there's a, a number one lesson is that the whole thing is the biggest personal growth journey ever, next to you know mm -hmm. relationships, whether that's love relationships, mm -hmm. parent child relationships, mother daughter relation, whatever relationships are like <laughs> the other bucket of massive personal growth. But this is just it brings up so all true. the things that you that. I thought I had worked on, solved, worked through, but actually, oh, ho, ho, they show up again in business. So I feel like whether it's decision making, whether it's trust, whether it's team building, whether it's um, whatever strategic decisions that you're making in your business, at least for me, it's it, I have had to have the courage to be humbled over and over and sometimes that's come because I had no choice but to be humbled because something didn't happen in the business that I wanted to and I was devastated blah, 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 blah. but there's a way in which success in business is really seductive it, like on the one hand it should be celebrated because it's an incredible accomplishment incredible on the other hand it's like can seduce you into thinking like Look at me. I'm so, I am fucking amazing. I I have figured out life. I know how to rule mm -hmm. the world. I am a magical manifester that can make anything happen. And then life is like, hold my beer. And mm -hmm. and and shows you, you know what I mean? And so I think I think the greatest lesson for me is just to keep to keep going back to like, man, where do I have toxic dysfunctional stuff in me that's showing up anywhere else with anyone else and how mm. can I keep how can I keep mining in a loving way um, to keep getting more and more to a point of truth honesty authenticity um, and accepting of like my warts and all um, and so what I'm putting forward is the truest thing I can put forward. The way I'm relating to my team is the truest way I can relate. And believe me, I, 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 that's a work in progress. Like I, I have made just a jillion mistakes in the last couple of years, whether it was because of my own dysfunction or because like I have a bachelor in fine arts and acting. I don't have an MBA. I mean, Stacy and I, in our second year in business together, we hit $1.2 million in revenue. And I didn't know, I, should, I was like, didn't know I had to be working with a bookkeeper. Oh, wow. <laughs> I didn't know. I, I picture you just I, like I, throwing I, the money in there like, we and sell, you know, yeah, I mean, celebrating. I didn't, and... I didn't know what I was doing. I, so I didn't know. Any, and I go to the bookkeeper and the, the bookkeeper was like, oh, you're in the right place. This is going to be great. They go, why don't you share with me your P&L? And I was like, what's a P&L? I have no <laughs> idea. So there's like, on the one hand, my inexperience has been a real gift because I really, did, most of the time, didn't even understand like what's getting in. <laughs> but on the other hand, it's been a real challenge because I, I've had challenges in, in understanding things like that or understanding how to work with team or, you know, I, I have plenty, plenty of shortcomings. Um, in all of those areas. So I, I guess the lesson for me is to keep, how can I just keep, I, I, I feel like this sounds so cliche, Allie, but maybe like, how can I keep um, evolving so that I am having better and better and better connections with anyone I'm in contact with, whether that's a lead or a student mm. or a team member or an executive or a board member or an investor or a whoever, like how can I be as as like real as possible in that moment in a in a and and connected, even if it's a difficult conversation or even if it's something that I'm struggling with. And I mean, this is an area that um, I have by no means mastered. 
by no means, but, but I'm committed, committed to continuing, to continuing to get better and better at it. So where is a long answer to your question? No, it's good. I like, I like your answers and I'm, I'm, I really listen to them too. And so I'm, I'm putting it together in, I have something going on in the back of my mind that I'll, I'll put it together in a minute. (laughs) So I wanted that answer too. Where, where are you, why, why is appetite, this concept important to you now and what you're doing with, and actually, do you want to give the website right now and, and what you're working on? Cause maybe that segues into, you know, why this is so important to you and you getting this body of work out personally to all women. Sure. Sure. Yeah. I actually have a free, a, a free training. That's like a taste of appetite, really, if I may use that word. Um, it's really about the, the ways that we hold ourselves back. Um, it's called the seven ways women hold uh, ourselves back without even realizing it. And um, I think the thing that's important about that is the idea is how do I identify what I am hungry for? And the direct line to that is looking at how am I holding myself back? Because each of the seven ways that we hold ourselves back are directly connected to a hunger that we may not even be aware that we have because it's we've we've had to cut off so much of our hunger. So there's seven ways we hold back. There's seven hidden hungers that we all have. And the way that we, so the way we can arrive at like, what am I deeply hungry for is looking at how how am I holding myself back? And how is that rooted in centuries old conditioning that, that have, has lodged itself somewhere in me. Um, So, so Mm -hmm. I can release that and open up. I, I really do think women are such an extraordinary, we're so powerful, so, so powerful. And we, but we're, we're new, we're new to having so much freedom, so much possibility. I'm about to turn 49 years old. I was born in 1974. I think that was the year that we could federally have a, our own like bank account and credit card. Yeah. Wow. I'm not 49 years. Like that's not very long. And yet when I read books about, I just read a book called 2030 um, and in 2030, women will own half the world's wealth. So we have this this past where we, we were not allowed to have hunger or much of anything else. And we have this future where we're going to have a lot. And that's just the beginning. And mm-hmm. what we're here in this tunnel trying to navigate through. Um, and so I, 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 I'm, I'm passionate about putting this, this work forward to say, like, how can we all arrive at a place where instead of Either I get me or I get the love, the money, the things that I want, but I have to sacrifice myself. Mm, yeah. How do we, how do we get to a place of both and? We're the generation to figure this out. Right. We are, right? This is the gift. Yeah. I guess we're supposed to be here for this. We signed up for it, people tell me. We may have paid to be here. I don't know. Like, <laughs> we, maybe, maybe we chose this lifetime and we're like, yeah, front row seats. <laughs> For the apocalypse or whatever this is happening right now. Um, but yeah, we are the first generation to um, be figuring this out. And that's why, too, all the women, right. you know, wh- when I'm talking with women about this, I'm like, you know, give yourself some grace, right? Here we, we, we've yeah. been giving all the equal opportunities and, and the power, and we, we've all proven we can do it, right? We, we're doing it. And herein lies the the beautiful journey, though, is blending in what you're talking about with appetite now. Like, how do we keep doing it, but in a way that honors, like, exquisitely, you know, who we are? Um, and, you know, th- earlier this yeah. morning, I was actually talking to Dr. Valerie Rain, another member of the trust as well. And this is just such a, a theme right now with with so many women that, you know, we we – and I went through this myself, like we get to a certain point of success. And I think for me, phase one was proving I could do it to myself. And then Mm -hmm. phase two, to be honest, was like proving to everyone else what I could do. I'm like, oh yeah, watch this, you know? And then I kept doing, and then finally I'm like, phase three was like, which is called your forties, by the way, is like, what's this really about for me? And then, uh, yeah. And now, and now the fifties for me is this beautiful integration, right? Of which is why I resonate with what you're talking about so much. So did yeah, you, I'm sorry, yeah, did you I mean, give the, you, to, did the, you, no, no, did you give the URL yeah, yet? The URL. No, it's, did a, you? it's Carrie Peters.com. C-A-R-E-Y okay. <laughs> Peters, P-E-T-E-R-S.com slash gift. 
Um, and that's where okay, we'll put it in the show notes her. as well. Yeah, and it's Carrie like Mariah Carey, C A R E Y, which is uh, unusual. Um, so, CarriePeters dot com slash gift, and you can get that 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 training there. I mean, I think I have to. The other thing that has been so important as I'm like going through my phases like yours, Allie, is really asking myself, how much of my value am I sourcing from my accomplishments? How much am I needing to achieve so that I can feel lovable, so that I can feel worthy or like I deserve it or like it's okay for me mm-hmm. to be here because because I or or that I'm getting approval or that I feel like I matter or that I'm important. Like how much of that am I hoping to get from business or from money and it's not going to come from that really Mm. it that's all an inside job um and so there's i guess i i as i think about this sort of next chapter on the one hand of course i feel so thrilled and excited about the future of hci and the what we can do you know for in the world of coaching but personally i think about like If I didn't, if I didn't, and this is not true for everybody in business, and not every entrepreneur needs accomplishment for like personal validation. This just happens to be true for me. Um, mm-hmm. If I didn't need that, if I didn't need uh, a business outcome um, for like to feel special and to feel like I mattered, what would I want to do? Mm. Ooh. Did you come up with this question? Yes. Yeah, I like that. But the, and so the gift to me of appetite is I'm asking myself the same: What am I hungry for? If I don't have to get these things that I are, we all want to feel like we matter. We want to feel that we're lovable. We want to feel like we're important to ourselves or someone else, right? But for whatever, in my mind the way I was going to get that was achievement. Mm -hmm. And, um, but if I, if I don't need achievement to get that, which I don't, I have, I have come to learn. (laughs) Then, then who am I and what do I want to be doing? What am I hungry for? So when I say, well, like appetite is not, it's, it's, I had a client ask me, like, am I going to come into Appetite and you're, you're going to ask me to blow up my whole life and, like, everything's going to have to change? Like, no, 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 no. Appetite is about a cozy down into your soul experience. So you can mm. get to, like, what is the soul level truth of who I am, what I'm here for, what I want to do, who I want to be with, you know, right? <laughs> Where, like, um, and we can take away, like, all the things we feel like we have to do to get to what we really want and just ask ourselves instead like what assuming i i get all my love safety and belonging all these core human needs matt then then what do i really want to do yeah i think yeah and and just to say like this is also not a process that needs to be scary like uh uh-oh what if i'm you know what if i find out what i'm hungry for is a divorce or what if I find out what I'm hungry for is to leave my job, <laughs> like something significant, you know what I mean? Something that's yeah, like, right. oh my God, has yeah. big implications. It, the other piece of it is, is that you have discernment about when you have an awareness or an insight, you can really be with that and then take your time to discern what do I want to do with it? So appetite is different in terms of like, the experience because usually we go into some kind of program or mastermind or whatever because you have a particular goal in mind Mm -hmm. and the goal is the thing an appetite Uh, connection to yourself the deepest part of yourself is the thing and then the goals unfold from there because um mm -hmm. they're meant to be rooted in like the truest truth that's yeah. and, and only you, I mean only you know the truest truth. So the whole experience is facilitated so that you can connect to yourself in 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 such a newer sort of like a deeper way. And I think the thing that's hard is we're used to disconnection. We are conditioned to be disconnected as women. 
Yeah. And so it's a, it's a different thing to be like, oh, wow, what's it like to be connected to myself? And how do I really feel? And what do I really want? And how do I have both and? How do I get me how do you and think, the things that I'm about? How do you think your work will impact your daughter? Well, so I I really feel as though, Allie, I don't know what's happened, but I've almost cried like three times on this podcast when you mentioned my daughter. Um, oh. ah. I suppose, I mean, I, I feel like there's so many answers to that question, but ultimately I feel like um, I got married at 40. I didn't think, I wasn't sure I was going to get married. Um, and I was pretty sure I was not going to have, I mean, I was like, well, that ship has sailed. You know, every doctor is going to tell you starting at age 33, 34, 35, like it's over, <laughs> you know, like, sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> ambivalent about having I mean part of me was like I think I want this because I should want this and what what does it mean if I don't and you know being a woman in your 30s and grappling with the question of motherhood is a big heavy for some not some people just know one way or the other and then for others right. of us are just like I'm I'm wrestling with yep. this I was the same um, yep. yeah. right and so um when I got married I just I, I figured my husband was 40. I was 40. Like, this isn't, the ship has sailed. Um, and then when I found out I was pregnant three months later, I was completely shocked um, and and devastated, really, because um, I didn't think that I had the physical, mental, or emotional capacity to be a parent. And I really love my mother, and we have a difficult relationship. Mm. But Evie, my daughter, is really, in some ways, the source of this work because as she was, like, having some challenges um, uh, when she was younger, we went to see a therapist to get some help with some issues. And the therapist said, you know, I think, I think she is um, insecurely attached. And I was like, oh, okay, well, let me read about that as I do, let me read 10 books about that. And as I was reading the books about that, I was like, oh, I'm insecurely. I don't have a secure, I don't have a feeling of peace and power inside. I have a feeling of terror and panic inside mm. most of the time. Um, mm. And I, I read this book that was called The Power of Showing Up for a parenting book that the therapist had recommended and said that um, the single most important thing you can do as a parent um, they said in the book is to help your child create a secure attachment. And mm -hmm. when I realized that that was like the single thing I didn't have and couldn't give her, um, I just was like, well, this is what I'm going to have to create. I'm going to have to find a way. And, and there are different like tools that I've encountered and things that I've done that have helped me come to a place of understanding like, oh, this is what it feels like to feel peace inside. Oh, this is what it feels like to feel power inside. Well, this is what it feels like to, to, to go inside and instead of feeling like a jumble, a chaos, or whatever, to feel a sense of sanctuary, really. Mm. And if I can develop that for myself, then she gets to have that because how could I, I can't give it to her otherwise. And, yeah. and that was really the, that like the genesis of appetite is like what we're really hungry for what we've been hungry for all along is ourselves to be able to like mm, I love that turn inside right to be inside with ourselves and feel that sense of sanctuary peace mm. power joy not just happiness but like not and not all the time, and that's unrealistic, but just like as a default almost, versus yeah. my default was just chaos. Um, yeah. So what it, what it means for her is that she gets hopefully 
and you know I don't know <laughs> because I'm not the playwright and I'm not writing her story but what I'm hoping is that she at least has someone like her mother who who has um the ability to feel that inside and when you have a mother who doesn't have that it's painful it's really painful yeah and that's how did I end up emotionally eating for 30 years you know like how did I you know and I I just I so hope my this can be by by doing this work I am creating a, a, a different future for my daughter that's my that's my prayer I love that. I love that. And I didn't expect that answer. That's so what you, that's just so beautiful. And I, thank you. I know that motherhood for me raised the bar in who I'm being. Cause you do Absolutely. think about, you know, cause, cause you know, it still comes up all the, all the bad shit our mom's done. It comes up, it comes up every day. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like if our moms did like stuff and I'll be like, oh God, is she going to be remembering that about me? Like the time that I yeah. said this or did that or wasn't, you know, so it just, you can like go crazy with it too. But, but I love you brought it down to its most essential. Is that just like being, being grounded in who you are for her so she can be who she is. That's, yeah. that's peace, man. That's, that's security. That's, that's the I don't understand the the attachment phrase like in in all its ways, but at a base level, I understand that um, so clearly because I could feel it when you said it and what that. Means. I remember one so, of my best girlfriends I think, when I got pregnant. She when I got pregnant, I found out it was a girl. My best one of my best friends turned to me and said, "She is here to heal you." This girl is oh. like she. My my friend is like. <laughs> She is in tune with the other. And I just yeah. was thinking like, but I get it. I get it now. Like, yeah, that is what it, it has been for. And it, one of the ways on top of all this that I create bodies of work is I automatic write. I tune into that mm -hmm. which is greater. I don't know mm -hmm. how to define it. I don't know if I'm the avatar of a 13-year-old girl from the year 2256 in the video game called Light. I don't know. I don't pretend to know. But I, when I open up a notebook and I close my eyes and I, I tune into something and I start to write and it comes and, and this is what came. So appetite, mm. the, 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 that body of work. So it, it all kind of distilled together. And then I was able to pull like all my 17 years of experience um into it as well so it, to me it feels really like the culmination of everything appetite does and the most um like personal vulnerable work i've ever i've ever created yeah i actually yeah. needed you, you you to to nudge me a lot to uh to even put it out we pulled it out we were like Ugh. that's right <laughs> <laughs> we got it I'm like, oh, this is interesting, but you know, I'm the same way though. I I need uh, many of my clients, especially when they've reached a, a certain level. It's more of that sounding board relationship where it's holding that space for the stuff that's been swimming around in there, right? But to come out and take shape and take form and become created. And um, it's been just such a pleasure to be on this part of the journey with you, and and also be privy behind the scenes to everything going on with the acquisition. And it's just been, it's been an amazing ride. I can't wait for this stuff to finally come out though. This, this body of work that you have just, I mean, really just the, the foundations at this point, there's, my mind is spinning with all these different places. Places, that places to go. And I just, it. I credit you so much for, um, also the other piece of this not only helping me give birth to this work and shape it and all the the things um but the other thing is that you really helped me Allie um have the courage to do I haven't created something by myself in since 2009 so is that what 14 years mm -hmm. and there was a way in which I sort of like forgot am I capable of that anymore do you know what I mean like it, it felt in, incredibly um, vulnerable to have it just be me. 
So partly because it was, it is so personal, but also because yeah. it's just me. And I, truth be told, I, I kind of hide, I, I stay back, you know, I like, I, I've never been interested really in being like Insta fame. I don't, I don't need, I don't have the desire to sort of be out everywhere with my face on a book and all of that. Like, I just never was motivated by that. In fact, if anything, I'm, I'm incredibly shy and introverted. And so to think about like just me instead of the business uh, was really difficult. And you really yeah. helped me, help me find a way to approach it um, that feels um, just incredibly authentic. So I thank you so much. Mm. I'm very grateful to you. Before I ask my last question, I want to remind everyone watching and listening that, you know, members like Carrie, these incredible women are all part of the trust. And the trust is the network that I founded for seven and eight figure women entrepreneurs that it's taken on this whole new level of depth that I didn't see coming. Originally, it was like, you know, we want women at a certain level because of the business conversations, they are different. But what's fascinating is the personal conversations are so different as well. And there's, there is a depth to the women in this group that I cannot describe. And, you know, many of our members are members of, of more than one group. We know there's other organizations out there and communities, but if you're looking for something where you feel truly surrounded by these brilliant women with this incredible wisdom who are very generous with it and open and authentic and the things that we talk about when you know we're in the rooms and the doors are shut and um if you're at the least curious about this we have an invitation call coming up it's on November 15th at 1 Eastern and an invitation call is you come sign up spend some time with me on Zoom I'm going to walk you through everything the trust is what we have lined up for 2024 we have some incredible events um, really interesting topics of conversation. We have our special guest advisor in the spring meeting is Rebecca Minkoff, who's built the ubiquitous you know, fashion brand. Um, we do just such cool stuff. But most of all, it's not about that. It's about the women in there who are like Carrie. So um, join the trust.org. Even if you're just curious, even if you're not at the seven figures yet, come set the intention, learn more, put it on your vision board, manifest that status for yourself in the future. Can I just say the Carrie, trust what's is the so reward? special? Oh, yeah. Oh, sorry. Why didn't say just about the trust? Because I, 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 I <laughs> yeah. was really, I was so nervous to kind of walk into the room, but I love the trust for a couple of reasons. One, everybody in there, nobody has the mask on of, look at me, I'm so successful. Do you know what I mean? And feeling like they have to behave, like pretend in a certain way. Like everyone is extremely candid, down to earth. People are talking about whatever blew up or whatever struggle that they were having. Like there's yes. no pretense. There's no like, you know how sometimes when you're in groups and there's a little bit of like a throw your deck on the table energy. Of like <laughs> my launch was, my launch was a million and my blah, 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 and this and that. Blah. And so there's like an ownership of like, yes, people have accomplished a lot and that's fantastic, but it's not, there's nothing braggadocious. There's nothing competitive. There's nothing, um, there's just none of that. Everybody is so open, incredibly generous. Um, and I also love, you know, just coming from the world of coaching, Allie, I love that there's so many different industries represented. There's so many different businesses in that room. Yeah. And I personally really like being exposed to other businesses. I don't like getting too far down the hidey hole of like my one particular industry because there's so much we can learn right. um, from other industries. So I just... I, I would just encourage if you're listening to to check out the invitation call because I think you'll be absolutely really blown away by not only the caliber of people, but I, I just feel like the, the the caliber of candidness and conversation. Yeah. And it means yeah. it, it means Thank a you. huge amount. Yeah. I would just say one final thing is like again, you're supposed to be, I'm at seven, eight figures. I've reached the top of the mountain. It's so many. No, you're still a person and you still have struggles and so does your business. And you need a place to be so able to be like able to be so real about that. And that to me is, is what the trust has been. So just yeah. wanted to share that it's, experience. I, I, when I first thought of that word years ago, mm -hmm. I went crazy over it because that the word has so many ways to interpret the trust and, and including like what you're talking about today, trusting yourself, 
trusting That's right. others around us, trusting what we we feel like we want and it's our time to do. And so I'll give that link one more time. It's jointhetrust.org. Again, even if you're not at the level you think you're ready, just come learn more. It's a great time to just get all the information. Okay. We'd love to talk with you. Okay. Carrie, what's the reward for you? Well, this conversation is a reward. I mean, just to even be sitting here having this conversation as a result of like such a, a long journey is just an incredible, feels so rewarding. Um, and then I guess the reward of the work is just t- being able to take something that feels like it's really coming from your soul and feels true and honest and to be able to watch that work positively impact my clients and to watch us all like embrace our hunger together and get to that place of I get me and the things that I love um, and moving away from that either or paradigm. Um, I mean, yeah, what's better than that? You know, I love it's incredibly it. rewarding. Thank you. This was yeah. awesome. Thank you so much, Carrie. Give the URL one more time. People can go learn more. Yeah, so it's a it's a free training, uh, the seven ways women hold ourselves back without even realizing it, um, and the URL is carriepeters.com slash gift, and that's Carrie, C-A-R-E-Y, like Mariah, uh, carriepeters.com slash gift. Awesome. Thank you for joining us, and I will see you at the next trust meeting. Bye. Bye. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed that conversation as much as I did. Subscribe now to the Reward Podcast to be sure to not miss an episode. And don't forget to visit jointhetrust.org to learn more about our modern community for forward-thinking seven- and eight-figure women entrepreneurs. You can learn more, apply to join us, or refer another woman you know who is over the million dollar mark and is ready for a different type of women's network. We have events coming up both live and online that are truly creating new possibilities for female leaders. That's jointhetrust.org. See you there.